Hey guys, I've gotten a lot of questions regarding shampoos and conditioners. So this video will take an in-depth look at shampoos and conditioners and the effects that they have on our hair. In this part two of this series, I will focus solely on conditioners in detail. Conditioners are designed to assist in manageability, restore moisture and protein, and or close the cuticle of the hair. How does conditioner work? In order to truly understand how conditioner works, we first need to know the basic structure of hair. Hair is primarily composed of the protein keratin. Proteins like keratin are composed of amino acids. The construction of an amino acid will determine the type of protein. It is important to note that these amino acids carry a negative charge. This means that your hair naturally carries a negative electrical atmosphere around it. You will see why this is important very soon. Now, if you recall from the part one of this series where I discuss shampoos and how they work in detail, you will remember that I discussed the different types of surfactants and their purpose. You will also recall that I mentioned that anionic surfactants were primarily used for shampoos. What I didn't mention is that these anionic surfactants are negatively charged. They are effective at removing dirt, but they also remove natural oils and positive charges in the hair as well. However, cationic surfactants, which are used in conditioners, are positively charged. We know that opposing electrical charges attract to one another. That same concept happens when we apply conditioner to our hair. When it is rinsed with cool water, the excess is rinsed off, leaving the positively charged cationic surfactants. This leaves a thin film on the hair which adds weight, making your hair easier to comb and preventing static electricity from building up in your hair, which creates frizz. This is the film or buildup that often accumulates as a result of chronic co-washing for long periods of time without properly cleansing. While some of these cationic surfactants are able to cleanse off some light buildup, cleansing conditioners, or co-washes as they're often called, are designed to gently cleanse the hair and won't remove stubborn, heavy, or excessive product buildup. This means that if you tend to use more natural, organic ingredients in your hair, you'll be able to more effectively co-wash your hair. But if you are not as ingredient conscious about your products, you will need shampoos to thoroughly cleanse off heavy or non-water soluble ingredients such as silicones and synthetic oils such as mineral oil. So what are the other purposes that conditioner has for hair? Well, there are a great deal of conditioners out there, and they're all not designed for the same specific purpose. The benefits that a conditioner provides for your hair will ultimately depend on its formulation. So let's take a look at some key ingredients that you may find in a conditioner. The first we are going to briefly review are cationic surfactants. As I discussed in the first part of this series, cationic surfactants are conditioning agents with a positive charge that cling to hair even after being rinsed to reduce static electricity. By coating the surface of the hair, they smooth the hair shaft, reducing breakage and tangling. Contrary to popular belief, many cationic surfactants do have the ability to mildly cleanse hair of light buildup. And again, I took the liberty of listing some examples of each type of ingredient if you would like to compare them to some of your products. The ones listed in bold are typically the most common in hair products. Next are polymers, which are also considered cationic surfactants since they are typically positively charged as well. Their purpose is to coat and smooth the surface of the hair, which adds shine and manageability. The next type of ingredients are natural oils, which most of us naturals should be especially familiar with. Carrier oils such as the ones listed here cover the hair and form a protective coating that adds shine, seals in moisture, and minimizes breakage. More importantly, Oils such as olive, avocado, and coconut contain molecules that are small enough to be absorbed into the inner cortex of the hair where it can improve hair's elasticity and strength. Next we have humectants, which are responsible for moisture and moisture retention. Humectants are ingredients that attract and retain moisture around itself by absorbing it onto its surface. And yes people, cetyl and cetyl alcohol are in fact conditioning moisturizers. Just because you see the word alcohol in the ingredient list doesn't mean you should throw away the product out the window. 
Next up are acidifiers. Their main purpose is to help regulate the conditioner to a desirable pH level. Being that shampoo tends to have a higher pH, it's important to always follow up with the conditioner to be able to bring the hair back down to its natural pH level, which is at 4.5 to 5.5. I'll go more into detail about hair and pH in another Cosmetology 101 video, but for now just know that acidifiers are there to help normalize hair to its optimal pH level. Next are silicones, which coat the hair to reduce friction, breakage, frizz, while providing protection from heat styling and adding a shiny or glossy finish to the hair. Now, a lot of people view silicones in a negative light because they are humidity blockers, which is great if you're avoiding frizz. But if you suffer from dry hair, it can make it difficult for your hair to absorb moisture as effectively as it normally could. It doesn't block out moisture from the hair entirely since moisture can still evaporate out from the inside of your hair over time even when using products with silicones. However, the problem is that those that don't shampoo their hair regularly will find that silicones don't work well with their regimen. If you are someone like me that shampoos every 1-2 to two weeks, then silicones won't have such a detrimental effect of preventing you from being able to effectively moisturize your hair. Also, not all silicones have to be cleansed with a sulfate or clarifying shampoo. There are a few that are water soluble and can be rinsed from your hair with just water. The last type of ingredients I'm going to discuss with you are reconstructors. They usually contain some form of protein and deeply penetrates the cuticle layer to rebuild gaps within the amino acid structure deep within the cortex layer of the hair. This results in restoring strength, elasticity, and luster to hair. We now know we're in conditioners, but what are some of the different types of conditioners out there? Different formulations of the ingredients we just covered will determine the type of conditioner. Let's take a look at some of the general types out there. Surface conditioners, also known as hair rinses or rinse out conditioners, eliminate friction and help to smooth the hair's cuticle. This type of conditioner is combed through the hair to ensure complete coverage, then it is immediately rinsed out from the hair, leaving a light coating over the hair to improve manageability and aid in detangling. Next are deep moisturizing conditioners. They are intensive moisture treatments that contain a high concentration of humectants. This deep conditioner is usually left on the hair for a longer period of time to ensure optimal penetration into the cuticle. Deep moisturizing conditioners are essential for dry or damaged hair types. Deep reconstructing conditioners are also deep penetrating conditioners, but these contain a more balanced mixture of humectants and reconstructors. The protein reconstructors rebuild the amino acid in the hair to strengthen and rebuild the hair from the inside out. Deep reconstructors are also left on the hair for a longer period of time to ensure maximum absorption. This type of conditioner is great for all hair types to help maintain hair moisture, strength, and elasticity. Now a popular hair myth is that any conditioner can be used as a deep conditioning treatment as long as you slap a conditioning cap on top. This is not the case. Most surface conditioners don't contain ingredients designed for penetration through the cuticle layer of the hair. They are designed to coat the hair, not penetrate through. Although some are able to double as both a surface or deep conditioner, but just to be safe, always check the directions and follow manufacturer instructions for best results. Protein treatments are the next type of conditioners. They are intensive protein reconstructors made of keratin-based liquid that penetrates into the cortex when placed on the surface of the hair. This treatment works to equalize porosity and improve hair elasticity and strength. The protein will also coat the hair after being rinsed, making the hair appear thicker. This type of conditioning treatment is imperative for severely damaged color or chemically treated hair and those that heat style their hair often. Constant heat styling and chemical processes on the hair will weaken the protein bonds within the hair. Therefore, it is important to replace and repair the gaps in the amino acid chains with protein treatments. I'm sure many of you have questions about moisture and protein balance, and I'll be sure to cover all that in a future Cosmetology 101 video. Next are leave-in conditioners or leave-in treatments. These are surface conditioners that consist of lightweight conditioners that remain on the hair and is not rinsed out. They are essentially a more watered down version of surface conditioners. They are typically light enough to be layered underneath other styling products. Leave-ins are best used immediately after shampooing and conditioning to protect hair for styling. The last type of conditioner are moisturizers. 
They are products designed with the primary purpose of improving or maintaining hydration levels in the hair. They are typically full of moisturizing ingredients with some type of emollient, silicone, or polymer to seal the moisture as well as the surface of the hair. Now, I'm sure many of you are thinking, well, what exactly is the difference between a leave-in and a moisturizer? There's no simple answer to this question, but I suppose the best answer is that leave-ins are typically lighter and are designed to be used after shampooing and prior to styling. Their primary purpose is to help make hair more manageable, lower the hair's pH, and protect hair from styling, UV rays, and even some offer protection from heat styling. Moisturizers, on the other hand, usually are thicker and heavier and are designed to be used before and after styling in between shampoos. Their primary purpose is to maintain moisture levels in the hair as it begins to dry out. Honestly, in this day and age, many products are becoming more and more dual purposed so you'll encounter many products that are formulated to serve as both a leave-in and a moisturizer. Especially for natural hair since dryness and moisture retention is typically an issue for our type of hair. So yeah, that about sums up this installment for this two-part series. I hope that you were able to take a lot away from this video. And keep in mind that my purpose is not to overwhelm you with information, but it's to help you make you more aware so that you're able to make better decisions for your hair. I know that this video was well over a half a year overdue and honestly I wasn't even going to try to edit or post this because it just requires so much editing on my part. So it's important that I get feedback on what you guys like to see from me. If you like these types of videos let me know by taking the time to thumbs up the video and share on your social media networks. If I see that certain types of videos aren't getting many views, likes, or comments then I'm more likely not to be bothered or waste my time with editing, recording, or posting those types of videos. So keep that in mind for future videos as well. As always, thanks so much for watching, and until the next video, be blessed. Bye.